About three weeks ago, I was at the Lafayette Durfee House in Fall River, Massachusetts, attending a lecture by one Mr. Don Hagist. If you're involved in the Revolutionary War reenactment community like I am, that name will most likely be familiar to you. But for the uninitiated, Don is a very prominent Revolutionary War historian who has extensively studied the British perspective of the conflict. He's sort of the go-to guy for any information pertaining to the British Army during the war. In fact, for my reenacting unit, which is the recreated 54th Regiment, most of the information that we have about the original unit comes from Don. He's written a number of books, has his own blog, and also writes for the Journal of the American Revolution, and I'll provide links to all of that in the description. Anyway, Don was in Fall River to give a presentation on the British regiments that were garrisoned in Rhode Island from the winter of 1776 to the fall of 1779. As I am a native Rhode Islander, and as the 54th was one of the regiments that was garrisoned in the state during that time, I felt that it would be beneficial to attend, to gain some insight into who these soldiers actually were, and what life was like for them. And of course, what kind of YouTuber would I be if I didn't bring my camera for such an occasion? The lecture runs for about an hour and 30 minutes, and I have broken it up into 5-10 to 10 minute chunks, which I will be releasing over the course of the next few days. The first part will cover some of the key events that happened during the occupation of Rhode Island, and future installments will cover topics such as the nationalities of the British soldiers who were there, how old they were, how much experience they had, what sort of trades they practiced, and more. So stay tuned. With all that out of the way, I will stop talking and roll the footage from the first clip. Enjoy. In the United States, there's a lot of information about who the soldiers were in the American Army, but not so much about who was in the British Army. And they were soldiers too, so we're going to look at a lot of them. But first, we'll start out with the context of this particular talk and the particular people we're looking at. We're focused on Rhode Island. If you lived here in the 1770s and somebody said Rhode Island, you would think not of that whole state over there, but you'd think of the biggest island in Narragansett Bay. That's Rhode Island and the area around it is Providence Plantations. The whole thing is the colony of Rhode Island, but really Rhode Island means the biggest island in Narragansett Bay. It was occupied by the British Army from December 8, 1776, is where I have to remember. I can look over here and read this, so I don't have to keep it on my shoulder, but I do it anyway. Um, until October 25th, 1779, so for three years, <laughs> Rhode Island was occupied by a large British army. And I say British army, it included Germans, it included loyalist soldiers, it included a large naval contingent. But I'm going to be focused on the British soldiers, these guys in the red coats who actually came from Great Britain to fight in America. Um, most of the time there are about 3,500 soldiers in three British regiments and four German regiments there. The numbers went up and down at different times over those three years, but that's a good number to think of in general for how many soldiers. And when I talk about a regiment, that's a term we'll hear a lot and we use all the time in the history books. And the size of regiments vary depending on the army and depending on the time period exactly. But if you just think of a regiment as being about 500 men, that will put you in the right ballpark for any time you're reading a general study and they're talking about this many regiments here and that many there. You know, it was never exactly 500, but that'll give you a rough idea of the kind of numbers we're talking about. Um, in a lot of history books, though, if they talk about Rhode Island at all in the American Revolution, you get the impression that the British showed up and then there was a big battle in 1778 and something happened, but nothing really changed. And then they left and not really much else went on. And you get the impression that it's a sleepy little backwater where nothing's happening. But if you were a soldier here in Rhode Island, you'd have a very different perspective about it. We'll just look at one month as an example. We'll take June 1777. Well, on June 4th, there was a little naval fight on Narragansett Bay. And then on June 5th, there was another exchange of fire between an American ship and a British battery on land. And on June 9th, there was a raid by American soldiers onto the island. Um, and some fighting there. And on June 12th, some more fighting. On June 13th, some more fighting. On June 18th, and June 19th, and June 20th, and June 20th again, and June 26th, and on and on. 
Every single month in Rhode Island looked like this. If you were a soldier serving here, you were on the front line the entire time. Even though there was no big battle most years and most months, you felt like you were in a war zone the entire time you were on service here. It doesn't require big battles to say, I'm at war. You can imagine being a sentry standing on the northern end of Rhode Island in 1777, and it's the middle of the night, and there's a cold wind blowing up, and at any time, a whaleboat could land a few hundred yards down the beach that you didn't even see, and a, and a, and a swarm of American soldiers could descend on you and carry you off. This was the kind of place it was to serve in Rhode Island. And if you think about places where U.S. soldiers are serving overseas today, where you don't have big battles going on all the time, but boy, they're at war every single minute they're there. This is the kind of place it was to serve in Rhode Island. Americans attempted to oust the British from Rhode Island several times. Among those people are familiar with occurred in August of 1778 when there was a three-week siege that culminated in a major land battle, one of the biggest land battles of the war. But there were a number of other attempts that don't make it into the books nearly as much. In October of 1777, the Americans tried to orchestrate a substantial attack on the island that failed. So here's Rhode Island in the 18th century. And then you've got um, Bristol up here, Jamestown, Prudence Island. We're right just a little bit off the map up in this corner right now in Fall River. And you can see how close the British garrison is to the mainland here and here. Well, there was constant exchange of gunfire across the deserters trying to swim across in either direction, all kinds of things going on up and down the bay. Um, parties crossing the bay in whale boats during the night and landing and carrying out raids on both sides. So it was a pretty dramatic place because the two sides were at such close quarters. Americans landed troops uh, down here and up here in October of 1777, but for a number of reasons, the attack failed. In the spring of 1778, it became apparent the Americans were going to try again, and the British garrison knew this. They could get intelligence in various ways. You could even stand on a high hill here and with spy glasses look up and see what was going on in Bristol and Warren and Fall River again. Just get a sense by the amount of activity that something was going. That's our point, is that... Um, Portsmouth here, mm -hmm. up there. Well, yeah, Portsmouth is the, actually the Portsmouth line is down oh, here somewhere. Okay. So all and up here is Portsmouth. This is Common Fence. Oh, okay, that's right, 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 yeah. Yeah, and we're 24 across so is right, right here there. now. Yeah, it's an interpretive. And so it's right there. Yeah, yeah you, got, you got it. Two, 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 four, five, and the West Ferry. Oh, the Island, Rhode Island, that's, which is a Quintic Island today was. Yeah, when I talk about Rhode Island, I'm talking about this island here. Portsmouth. Yeah, of course, was called it today. Exactly. New ports down here, of course. Yeah. Fort um, Barton was a very prominent place to watch. Well, 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 sure. You're up on the high heights yeah. here. Yeah. British have a they large encampment and, and fortifications at the narrow points. Mm. And, well, and a big concentration of soldiers in here so they can move mm. quickly anywhere they're needed. But from here, you can see here. And from here, you can see here. Yeah. So you can keep an eye on each other pretty well. So in the spring of 1778, it's very clear the Americans are starting to do things like gather, collect boats, and collect military stores and whatnot. And knowing how this works, because it was an attack in October, the British say, well, let's do some preemptive things here. Let's disrupt their plans. Um, so they can see that stores are being stockpiled, boats are being built. So on May 25th, 1778, the British send a large force, almost a thousand, no, about 500 men, rather, to land here and march up to the town of Bristol and way up there to Warren, that other red spot up near the top, and they destroy a lot of military stores that are being collected there. They withdraw, and it's a highly successful raid um, in terms of destroying things that your enemy has stockpiled. There's not a lot of actual combat going on. And then six days later, they conduct another raid up here to Fall River where we are now. That raid consists of a much smaller raid than the one a few days before. It's only 100 men from the 54th Regiment of Foot, and they 
British landed, they burned a sawmill, they burned a corn mill, they burned about 15,000 feet of plank that was ready. And again, it's just a bunch of boards. We don't know what the Americans are gonna do with it, but they might be building boats, so we better get rid of this stuff. But American militia had formed, they saw the British coming, literally, because you can see the boats coming up the bay, and they were a lot more ready this time. Six days before, there had been a raid in Warren, so they're ready for something to happen. The American militia formed, they were able to prevent the British from pushing any farther inland and doing any further destruction. Eventually, the British withdrew back onto their boats. So it was an actual successful defense by the American troops of the stores and military supplies being built up in this area. 